Did you hear that song? Anything you want, you got it. Now think about that. That that's what the infinite is saying to us all the time. Anything you want, you got it. But then we got to ask is, but what's the secret? What's the key to getting anything you want? Because there is a secret in that. And people come to me and they say, well, what really happens? I'm doing all this, I'm doing all this, I'm doing all this, I'm doing all this, but I don't have it. And there's one thing that gets in our way, and it's the D word, and that's doubt. So we're going to explore this idea of doubt today. We're going to take it and go within because we have a lot of words in our vocabulary that say doubt. How about the word maybe? How about the word want? How about the word not now? How about the word I'm not enough? How about I can't? You see, we, how about the word, here's a great one, but. Do your but get in your way? I mean, do you realize that every time you say a sentence and you put the word but in it, you're taking yourself away from your dream? Now that's a but you don't want in your life. What about the word because? Because is the justification of something you don't want in your life, not realizing and accepting that there's a power in you that doesn't know any limitation that will give you everything you want. But as long as we're stuck in the world of condition, and that's all it is, the world of condition, when we're stuck in that world of condition, guess what? We're not in our power. It's the condition that gives it to us. Well, you know, Lee, I was at my mother-in-law's house, and she's a real difficult woman to deal with, and I just lost my spiritual mojo. My mother-in-law is my problem. Anyone ever have that problem? I did. What about, um, I can't find a better job. I can't find my perfect job. It's because of the economy. It's because of this. Do you realize that in the midst of the Great Depression, back in the 30s, more millionaires were created in the midst of that depression than at any other time? It's only the limitation that we have in our mind, it's only when we buy into the statistics that are put out there that are saying this is what's going to happen. I want you to know the statistics of the time when in December 17th, 1972, when Jean and I got married, the statistics of all of my friends said, you will be divorced. Do you know why? Because I was a crazy son of a gun. And no one said, I will last any amount of time in a marriage at that time. And here I am almost 44 years later. Here's the reason why. We are not statistics. We are individuals, but we buy into statistics and they become the power. And statistics, what? Bring doubt in from us knowing who we are. So let's start a little bit at the beginning and know. There is this one power and presence that we call spirit, God, universal mind, infinite intelligence. Call it any name you want. But this power is always mirroring back to us the state of our thought. Not an in individual thought, but the all thought, the atmosphere of thought that we've created from the time we were born to the very breath we're breathing. That is what's picturing in our life. That statement, okay? So get a picture of that. Your life is always mirroring back to you because that's what spirit does. It mirrors back to itself so we have a reflection of what it's mirroring back so that we can go forward and create a new reflection because our desire is always to become more. It's to express more. It's to experience more. It is never to be comfortable. I hear so many people say, I just want to be comfortable. No, you don't. That's boredom. Being comfortable is death. Think about this. You are a creative being. You have a creative power that is always responding to you at every moment. Whether you're using it consciously or not, you are creating so why not take that power and create all the time with your thoughts always going toward what you want? 
So you've got, when we enter into spirit, enter into a state of oneness with spirit, spirit then enters back into the same state that we enter into it with. So if we enter it with, into it with small ideas, with small connection, with small experience, ex, experiential um, expectations, spirit enters back into us and gives us exactly that. It only responds to the degree that we comprehend it. So I always ask this question. How big is your view of God? And in that view of how big is your view of God, can you see yourself as a part of it? Or do you see yourself as separate from it? You see, this is where the whole beauty of the idea of meditation comes in. Because in meditation, when you're, when you're there and you're closing your eyes and you're going within and you're saying, there's a power and a presence. It is everywhere. It's always been. It always will be. It is the seen as the unseen. It is the known. It is the unknown. And it's right where I am in this moment. And in that, because it is all, I am one with it. And I now am peace. I now am joy. I now am abundant. I now am love. You see, when we get into that state, we are now connected with an infinite power and presence. And that power now will respond to the depth of the embodiment of that idea with us and grant us anything we want. And here's, you know, people always say, what's the purpose of prayer, Lee? It's real simple. It's to unify our mind with the universal mind, with the God mind, and to redirect the subjective nature of our thought. So our thought, the all thought, is the subjective nature. It's the underlying nature. And so when we pray, we're making a statement into the mind of God to change the direction of our subconscious thought so that we can have a unique and different experience. So when people talk about prayer, well, i got to learn how to pray. Prayer is simply, you. Re if you take a thought, I want a job that gives me 50,000, no, I want a job that gives me $100,000 a year. I want to work with the right people that allows me to use my unique gifts in a way that brings me joy, that challenges me, and I serve others. And if you say that over and over and over again, that is a prayer that you're putting into the universal subjective mind. You put that in, and the more your subconscious embodies it, in other words, the more you believe it, you start to attract the experiences, the people, the situations, the circumstances that allow that particular job to come in and all you have to do then is be open to the receptivity of receiving that job. See, here's, here's really cool. We know that the subjective state of our thought creates our experiences. Now, when this subjective state contradicts our conscious desires, we experience doubt. You see, when the subjective state, the all-encompassing thought process that we've got, and we've got some desires, and they're in conflict, we go into doubt. Why? Because the main part of our thinking says, you can't have it. You've never experienced it. It's not in your possibility realm. And so we get this doubt. But even before we get that doubt, we get the doubt of, Am I worthy? That is a huge doubt. Because we are not, at that moment when we say we're not worthy, we have lowered the understanding of who we are. We are not accepting that we're one with God. We're not accepting that we are an individualized, infinite expressing. We're not accepting that there's a power and a creative law that is responding to the nature of our thought. We're not accepting that at all. We're seeing ourselves as this human flesh that is subject to the conditions, that is subject to what the televisions, the politicians, the ministers, the teachers have taught us. We're subject to the outer thing that in order for me to be happy, I have to have my wife respond to me in a certain way. No. It's who I am that when I'm with someone that I receive a response that back to me. It's because I'm, I am the God experience. I'm coming from within me to that. It goes back to the thing that we we've talked about a thousand times. Heaven and hell are not places, they're states of mind. And the state of mind you take into any situation is that. So if you're going in and you want something and you take in a state of doubt, you're going to get the same experience played over and over and over. It's never going to change because you haven't changed the subjective mind. Doubt kills all prayer. 
It kills it. The second you doubt, it means you don't believe, right? And so we go back to the master teacher when he said, it is done unto you as you believe. When you believe something, do you doubt it? No, it's a belief. Doubt just disappears. It's a belief. When you believe something, it comes back to the idea when Raymond Charles Barker wrote the book, The Power of Decision. He very clearly says that when you decide, when you make a decision, you are saying to yourself, there is no other alternative. If there is no other alternative, then what? You can't think doubt. There is no other alternative. I am going to, I am this now. Now when you say that and you've decided on that, everything you think, do, and say becomes that. You don't go, I'm going to be this tomorrow. You'll never become it. I would be that today, but this. No, you've just put doubt in. I can't do it now because of this. I'll wait till later. The universe doesn't know later. It only knows what you're saying now. You see, in this idea of connection with oneness, there's only the now. So that's why when we pray, when we affirm, we affirm now. Because we want to change the subjective mind, this mind that's all around us. Every cell in our body is a part of that mind. Every cell in our being has consciousness. We don't realize that. Yesterday at um, Mary Man and Morrissey event, there was a young lady that Jean and I met um, just by a fluke. And seemed like a beautiful young lady, mid-40s, looked cute, attractive, had bubbly energy. And then yesterday she was talking to Jean, and I sensed something. I sensed something not right, and so I took her hand, and we went off to a couple chairs on the side. The meeting began, and I said, so what's going on? And tears just, just exploded. My life has fallen apart. This is my life. I had a, I had a brain tumor. I had surgery, removed the brain tumor. I've been in pain for three years. My husband, of 25 years, divorced me. My last child just went off to school. I'm alone. I have nothing. I'm in misery. And tears are just flowing and flowing and flowing. And I just gently and loving her, and I said, what I'm hearing is that your number one value is probably being a caregiver. And she says, how did you know? I said, because you just said these people are gone and you've got no one to care for. So we started to explore. I just sat there and explored and I allowed her to talk and I said, in this moment, we're talking right now, and she started to liven up. Her eyes got bigger. And I said, in this moment right now, do you feel any pain? And she says, no. And I said, why don't you feel pain? She says, I don't know. I said, because you're tapped in. You're connected with someone right in this moment, and in this moment there's no pain because you're not thinking of the past. You're not worrying about the future. You're right here with me. So we explored the other values, and as we talked for like the next 10 minutes, I was able to discern through our conversation, pull out, these are her five dominant values. And I said, okay, so what can you do today with what you have based on where you are to get a little bit further into your values and she said, well, I could do this. And I said, when you think about doing that, how do you feel? She said, I feel good. I said, do you have any doubt that you can do that right now? Do you have any doubt? She says, no. I said, that's what we do in every moment. We know who we are. In every moment, we take that little step forward into what we know, into that little step of what we know, into that little step of what we know. And then the doubt disappears because what happens is this. Doubt often occurs because we feel unworthy because it is difficult to move from my current beliefs to what I want because it's too big of a jump. You see, I know I could jump from here over the edge and land down on the carpeting. But if I back away and I go to the edge of the stage there, I'm not doing it. I got doubt, right? So if I change my expectation and come here and I make the jump, I'm successful. But by making that jump, have I not moved forward? 
Isn't my intention in life always to be moving forward in life, to becoming more? And it's not about becoming more, it's about becoming more aware. The more aware we become, the more we get to experience life because it is in awareness that we realize our oneness with all that is. It's in awareness to realize that these limitations are just in our minds, they're just perceptions. It's in the awareness that we start to understand that everything that is blocking us is merely an illusion and all we have to do is step through the illusion and when we illu- step through the illusion, the truth hits us in the face that we're one with the power that creates all things and we can move forward with that power. Here's the great question. You want to know this question inside and out. And it is, what can I believe now? This is really big, people. Because you have this lofty goal. I know you do. If you don't, we need to work on getting a lofty goal. But I've got huge goals. But I can't believe them right now. But I can do this. I can ask the question, what can I believe now? How far can I jump forward now? And then, not worry about the how. Allow the how to handle itself, but keep focused on what it is I want. And by focusing on what I want, I'm going to paint a picture around what I want, right? So if I've got a picture of a home, so I've got this home, Now, how do I fill in the rest of it? Have I defined each room? Have I defined where the windows are? Have I defined how the flow is through the house? Have I defined what my back house will all be glass? What does it look upon? Have I gone into infinite detail about it? Because remember what we said earlier, the law, spirit, gives us what we believe about it. And most of the time when we do our prayer work, we're not setting a clear picture. The clearer the picture that we give the law and then we buy into the picture, we believe in the picture and the more we say it, the more we do it, the more we say it, the more we do it, it becomes embedded in our subconscious mind and then it doesn't become anything but a natural course of action. So when the house appears and you see it, oh yes, it should be there. It's not, oh my God, look, there's the house. You see, when you get excited about something like that, it's going to disappear. It's too big a jump. It's not in the norm. But when you see it and it just happens, it's in the flow. It's, for example, I think the great thing is, um, I remember the first time we saw Noah's Event Center. Was it, I think I was the first one that saw it, and I went crazy on it. I said, this is a great place for agape. I said, my God, if we could have this, it would be so good. Do you see, where am I? I'm in wanting... I'm in, oh my God, this is, so, this is so much more than we've got today. I was there. Where was I? I was way back over here. It was too big a jump. And then I got a couple people from Agape. We went over and looked at it. And then they said, we can't take you. Then I said, what about in 2017? Can you take us? They said, no, we've got another church signed up. So I just said, okay. I said, I got a mental equivalent. The mental equivalent is, this is what I see as the next logical step for agape on Sundays. And I let it go. I knew it. It was done. It was in my mind. Two months later, phone rings. Reverend Lee, yes, hi. This is yada yada from Noah's. Well, hi, how are you? Guess what? That church is no longer going to be here in 2017. Do you want to be our tenant? I said, I'll be there later this afternoon. I wasn't excited. Why? I knew already it was going to happen. I changed it. I knew it was a logical step. I let the law of the universe. There's no way I would have known that that church wasn't going to be there. You see, when we align ourselves to something, we've got to let go of the how because it's not that we let go of doing. It let, it's that we let go of in a specific attachment to a result and know that it will respond. And then in every moment, we take a step forward. Because what I pray for is that divine wisdom guides and directs my thought, word, and action as with every step that as I move toward my dream. So I simply surrender into the idea that my dream has taken me one step forward, one step forward, one step forward. And what does that mean? It means I'm always moving in the direction and if I'm present on the journey, I'm in bliss. I'm in a state of heaven. Because it's the journey. How many times... I was a freshman in college, 
and I was working in the summer after being a freshman in college. This is before Jean. And I was working at this outdoor rec area. And one of the girls that worked in the canteen area, and we all lived on this outdoor rec area, she was a prom queen of the neighboring high school. And I wasn't, I wasn't a player. I wasn't. As, much, as many of you think I was, I wasn't. I was really shy. I know, it's hard to imagine. God help the co- high school that I go back to now. Um, but I was shy. But I one day said, I think we were, I'd talk to her when I'd go up and get food, and she was friendly. So I asked her on a date. We went on a date. I was bored out of my mind. But you see, it helped me get over the idea I didn't have to doubt myself. I doubted that I was worthy. See, you're worthy. You just got to ask and believe. Ask and believe. Ask and believe. And here, always follow when you ask and believe with the idea, this or something better. So wait a second. I get told no. What happens? Later on, I get my wife. If I'd have been married to that one, I'd have been bored out of my mind. This one keeps me excited. That's a private matter. And it's not that she keeps me excited. It's that my view of her is constantly seeing her grow and change. And I go into the relationship excited, which causes her to respond in that way. And then we keep having all these great experiences. I mean, yesterday at Dream Builders, when I was creating my dream of my life, I saw us in Italy in this little village right outside of Rome, and we were sitting at this restaurant. There were only four tables, and they brought over this fresh bread right out of the oven with this olive oil that had been grown in the village. And I was there with her, and we were dipping the bread and eating the, oh, with the olive oil, it was delicious. And then I asked them, can I buy an ol- a, a little bottle of olive oil home b- to take home? They said, you can't take it home. I said, but I still want to buy a little bottle of olive oil. And they said, why? I said, well, I want to take it back to my room. And I want to rub it all over my wife. <laughs> because just think if your wife had that perfect olive oil all over her, would that not be a dream come true? Now, it may not be your dream, but I'm different. I say that to let you know so I don't rise up into the ethers off the platform. I'm very much on the planet. I'm very much grounded in earth. I'm very much like you. And here's what I understand, too, is that sometimes when we get on our spiritual journey, we want to be in the spiritual realm all the time. And I've been in times and places where I've been there, and that's not why we're here. We're here to be grounded in this earth, to experience this physical body, knowing our connection with all, and taking our gifts and going as far forward as we possibly can. That is our goal. So I don't want to be above and raised. I want to be right here, but I want to be conscious. I want to be aware of the power within me. I want to be aware of the power within you so that collectively we can go and grow and experience and expand and have the most magnificent life ever. And what do we do together? We create heaven on earth now. Isn't that what love is? That's the purpose of agape. That's the reason why we've created the spiritual center. That's the reason why we send this message out on our videos and our podcasts all over the world. We are getting such a response all over the world that this energy is there because people want to know the truth. They want to understand it, they want to feel the power within them, and they want to experience and express life. So today, I want you to go home, and I want you to dream. I want you to dream about something that you want, and begin to start to live it. Act as if it is done now. Pray as if it is done now. Affirm that it is done now. Be grateful as if it is done now. And B, here's the key to this thing. I hear a lot of people talking about this, but they never say this. Not everybody, but some do. But as you must be persistent and consistent with your practice. That's the key to making the law work. When you're persistent and consistent, there can be no doubt. 
You're putting into law, this is what my expectation is. There is no doubt, it's persistent and consistent. When you do that, you will create a life that on your deathbed, you'll say, I lived, I lived, and it was good, so good. Let's pray. I want to thank you for joining us today. I am so grateful that you took your time to watch or listen to this message. If you found this message beneficial, I would ask you to go to our website. Once there, click on the Contribute button and experience the joy of conscious and purposeful giving. It is through your gifts that we are able to bring this message to the world. I would also ask you to please share this message with anyone you feel might benefit. Again, I want to thank you for joining me and the Agape community as together we bring joy to life.